All right, so for the installation requirements as it pertains to the Zen server itself, it runs directly on your hardware. So there's nothing between the hardware and Zen server. It is literally the operating system. It talks directly to your hardware, including NIC and storage controllers. Network interface card, obviously, is what NIC stands for. Now, from a requirements standpoint, it requires a 64-bit CPU with Intel VT or AMD V enabled. Now, that doesn't mean that Zen server won't actually install if your CPU isn't Intel VT or AMD V. This is what's recommended. Zen server will install. However, your features and the functionality of Zen server will be very limited if you don't have Intel VT and AMD V enabled. Now, remember, Zen server is a para virtualized hypervisor, or it, it uses the para virtualization technique of server virtualization as we discussed. So, therefore, it requires the processor that you have on the physical server to be capable of doing a virtualization technology in order to leverage the capabilities. You need two gig of RAM minimum. Obviously, that's not what you should have in the server. That's minimum just to run Zen server. You want much, much more in order to host many more virtual machines on top of the Zen server. 16 gig minimum disk space. This is just for Zen server and DOM zero. So it loads everything necessary. Obviously, you need more disk space for your virtual machines, whether it's SAN, whether it's NAS, or whether it's local disk. 100 megabyte minimum network interface controller is required. I strongly recommend against it. If you can even still find 100 meg NIC, gig minimum, 10 gig. If it's available, then go with that. The more the merrier, obviously. Zen server hardware capabilities. So Zen server can understand up to a terabyte worth of memory. So you can put up to a terabyte inside of the physical host that's running that's going to run Zen server. You can have up to 16 physical network interface cards. You can have up to 64 logical processors. Remember, the logical processors are a combination of the cores, the hyper-threading that's enabled, etc. You can have up to 64 logical processors in a physical Zen server. I strongly recommend you check the hardware compatibility list at the location that you have on the screen here before you purchase any of your hardware or any of the peripherals that you intend to put within your server. Now, while most of the server vendors, when you go to purchase a server and you tell them what you intend to use the server for, for example, send server, they will check if it's compatible. They will check if it's on the hardware compatibility list or not. However, since we tend to buy peripherals like HBAs and NICs and others for the server, you want to make sure that the peripherals that you're purchasing are also on the HCL so that you don't come across any issues uh, during installation or afterwards from a driver or anything else perspective. Now, while Zen server is meant to be installed on server class hardware, because it's a Linux distribution and because it's using the para virtualization technique of virtualizing, it tends to be compatible with a wide array, with a wide range of workstation or even um, laptop hardware as well. If you wanted to experiment, you could install Zen server on a laptop or in a workstation. Odds are it will work. Zen client, which is the type one client hypervisor that Citrix has, which is the equivalent of Zen server, except Zen server is for server class. Zen client is for client laptops and desktops is also built off of the same hypervisor. Hence why you can get away with installing Zen server on workstation class hardware as well. Now, where to download Zen Server 6 and Zen Center? You can either go to citrix.com forward slash Zen Server and you can download it from there. Or if you have a My Citrix account, then you go to citrix.com forward slash My Citrix. Zen Server is a 508 meg ISO download, while Zen Center is around 41 meg download. So, you know, not too big uh, from an ISO perspective. 10 minutes to Zen. So, it's really easy to install Zen Server. We're going to burn the ISO to a CD, put it in your drive, or mount it using something like Magic ISO Virtual Drive, for instance. Make sure VT is enabled in your server's BIOS, VT or AMD V if you have an AMD processor. Boot to the CD-ROM, answer some of the basic installation questions that you're going to come across, reboot, and voila, you are ready to use Zen Server. Perform some initial configuration, for instance, you know, give it an IP address, maybe a host name, configure a password for it, bada bing, bada boom, you are done, then you can install Zen Center, connect through Zen Center to your Zen server, and you're up and running. This whole process should take you right about 10 minutes. And I'm going to demonstrate that in a second here. All right, now from a Zen Center installation requirements perspective, Zen Center is a Windows-based application, which means you can install it 
on, on a physical or a virtual machine, it doesn't really matter as long as it's running a flavor of Windows, such as Windows XP 7, Vista, Server 2003, 2008, and 2008 R2. It does require the .NET Framework 3.5. You need a minimum of 750 megahertz from a CPU perspective. One gig is recommended. Go higher if you can. One gig of RAM minimum, two gig is recommended. 100 meg disk space is needed, so it's a fairly small footprint here. 100 meg or faster NIC is also required. 1024 by 768 minimum screen resolution is required to run Zen Center. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the installation of Zen Server 6. All right, so what I've done is I've mounted the ISO CD inside of this physical server. And once it boots up, it's going to recognize the CD-ROM and it's going to go through the installation or the start of the installation automatically for Zen server. All right, the first thing we have to answer is what type of keyboard are we going to use? I'm just going to leave it as the standard QWERTY US. You can go ahead and read through some of these screens. This is just uh, basically a welcome screen telling us what it's going to do. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK to continue. And feel free to read the license agreement. I'm going to go ahead and accept the EULA here. So what I've done is I've actually disabled Intel VT, which is what my processor is capable of here, just to show you that the installation of Zen Server will go through, you will get this type of message saying that some of the capabilities aren't going to be there if you don't have Intel VT enabled. Now, the good thing about this screen is if you've forgotten to enable VT on your server, most servers today will come with VT and AMD V enabled by default. But just in case, this prompts you to basically you know, take a step back, go back into your BIOS, enable the virtualization technology and come back. For our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and click on OK to get through with the installation here. At this point, you need to, to select where do you want to install Zen Server. I have 50 gig of free disk space local, so I'm going to go ahead and use that free disk space to install my Zen Server on here. It's asking what is the source of the installation media. The source of the installation media for me is local. It could be HTTP or NFS for you, depending on how you're doing the installation. Would you like to install any supplemental packs, anything like drivers or anything like that? Depending on your installation, it could be yes or no. For our purposes, we're going to select no. What this does is it verifies the integrity, really, of the ISO that you've downloaded to make sure that you know it's not corrupted and it's, a, it's an actual good ISO to install from. Now, I've done this several times, so I know that my ISO is good. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that. And at this point, you need to give a password to the root username. The root is the administrator, the first user, the god user, basically, on the system. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a password here. And no, I will not tell you what that password is. <laughs> Click on OK to continue. You can opt to have DHCP assign an IP address, or you can select to give it an IP address yourself. For the purposes of my demonstration, I'm just going to leave it at the default and let DHCP specify one. And then when we talk about managing Zen Server and the managing Zen Server lesson, we'll come back and revisit how you can change the IP address if you need to. Again, for my purposes, I'm just going to go with DHCP for now. From a host name perspective, do you want to give this server a particular host name or do you want DHCP to assign a host name to it? I want to give this a, a host name. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go through and call this xs.trainsignal.com. As far as DNS is concerned, we're going to leave that to the DHCP server. From a time zone perspective, I'm just going to go ahead and select America here. Click on OK. And then we're going to dig in a little more specific as to where in America. And I'm just going to go ahead and find Chicago and click OK to continue. If you have a, an NTP server, it is critical that you configure the time settings on your Zen server properly. And we'll talk a lot more about that in the Managing Zen Server lesson. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and select Manual Time. However, again, I stress that if you're doing you know, multiple installations of Zen Server, you should have an NTP server of some sort that is running on your network. If that is the case, then you want to use the NTP server by pointing Zen Server to it. So you would select using NTP. The next screen will ask you to enter an IP address for your NTP server. 
you give that and, and voila, it, it's very simple. For my purposes, we're going to keep it at manual time and then we're going to click on OK. Now I'm ready to install a Zen server, so I'm just going to click on install here. It is very, very easy, very, very quick to install Zen server. 10 minutes to Zen. I chose to set the time manually, so you know, go ahead and make sure that everything is right. Click on OK. You have successfully installed Zen Center. All, all we're waiting on right now really is for a final reboot. Make sure you take out the media. And here it comes. And voila, your server is now up and running. Now this covered the basic configuration of the server. And what I mean by basic configuration is we've given it, as you can see, the DHCP has assigned it an IP address so I can connect to the server now. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to before we move on to the installation of Zen Center, we're going to cover everything here in the managing Zen Server lesson. But the takeaway here is that most of the tasks that you can do through Zen Server's graphical user interface, you can do through the server console, the Zen Server server console, which is, again, where Zen Server's power from an architectural standpoint is, is the fact that you can connect to any Zen Server and you can get the configuration off of that particular server. So again, our status display here shows me that I've gotten an IP address, I have a subnet, I have a gateway. I'm ready to go from a connectivity standpoint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to my Windows 7 PC and we're going to go ahead and install Zen Client. Did I just say Zen Client? I keep, I keep saying Zen Client. I mean Zen Server. Uh, anyway, so I've downloaded the Zen Center ISO to this Windows 7 machine that I want to use to connect to my Zen servers. And here it is on my desktop. So we're just going to go ahead and double click on it. And the installation here is uh, relatively straightforward. Nothing major, just basically next, next all the way. Welcome screen. We're going to next through it. Default location. I'm also going to next through this and install. We're going to go ahead and click on yes and finish. That's it. That We just installed Zen Center. Tell me that wasn't quick. All right, now that it's installed, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on Start. We're going to click on Citrix Zen Center. Would you like Zen Center to periodically check the internet for updates? I'm going to say yes. And let's go ahead and maximize this. And this is what Zen Center looks like before you've added any hosts or created any resource pools or done anything. This is sort of like the welcome screen here. Now, in order for us to add a Zen server host, what we're going to do is, as you might have guessed, click on the add icon here. And we're going to enter in the IP address of the Zen server that we just finished installing here. Username is root, and we're going to enter in the password that we configured during the installation, and we're going to click on add. All right, so one of the first things you want to make sure as you're adding a new Zen server to Zen Center, do you want Zen Center to save and restore the connection state on startup? I do want that. I'm going to check the box here. And once you do that, you are able to configure a master password for all the Zen servers. Now, for my purposes, I'm going to go ahead and skip that. But if you wanted to configure a single master password for all the Zen servers that are going to be joining the Zen Center, you can do that as well by selecting the checkbox here, entering the password and confirming it. For our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and cancel out. And we're going to click on OK. And there you go. The Zen server has now been added to Zen Center. And you can configure most of the or all of the options of Zen server from a graphical user interface. So you have your general settings here. And we're going to go through all of these settings in the managing Zen server lesson. But I wanted to give you a quick tour here. You can check the memory, check the storage, and so on and so forth. And that's all there is to it from an installation and initial configuration of Zen Server and Zen Center standpoint.